staring into your eyes makes my heart come alive and suddenly brought to life when I met you and reaching beyond the skies running deep stretching wide perfect life realized here with you you sing it out come on oh, this love is for real you will never let go never let go oh it's more than just words like me i'm my control out of control this is real love this is real love Lifted high, we pray. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. And I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy trust in Jesus. Come on, you sing it out. My hope is built. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy trust in Jesus. 
it out, church. Christ, uh, come on. Cornerstone, weak or made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of Church, why don't you lift up your hands this morning? Kind of encourage you as the band plays this. Can you lift up your hands, lift up your heart, and you just worship Him, all right? Come on. It's just you and Jesus this morning, church. Give Him the praise, give Him the glory. Push through this morning and give Him all that He deserves. Come on.
Jesus in Christ alone. Come on, you sing it. A cornerstone, we can make in the same. church let's keep going church sing it out of praise and do
Come on, we sing on the third. Sing on the third, I break up. Come on, rejoice. The sun of heaven rose again. Yes, she did. Come on. Trample death. Where is your Shall pierce the night, and I will rise among the saints. My gaze transfixed on Jesus' face. Thank you, Father. Come on, can we fix our eyes on Him, church? Thank you for all you've done, Lord. Father, that you're coming back for us, God. We give you praise, Lord. We lift up the song.
lift up a shout. Thank you, Lord. You're alive. Oh. Amen. Amen. You guys excited this morning? Come on, let's keep praising him this morning, all right? Put your hands together. Give him all the praise he's worthy of, all right? Come on. I was lost with a broken heart. You picked me up, now I'm set apart. From the ash I am born again. Forever safe in the Savior's hands. And you are more than my words could say. I'll follow you, Lord, for all my days. I'll fix my eyes following your ways. Forever free in unending grace. Come on, you say. You are, you are, you are my freedom. We lift you higher, lift you higher. Your love, your love, your love. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. You are. darkest night let your light be the shining light breaking chains that will hold them in you set your sun down to set me free everything of this world will fade I'm pressing on till I see your face I will live that you will be done come on we won't stop I won't stop till your kingdom come you are, you are, you are my freedom. We lift you higher, lift you higher. Your love, your love, your love, never ending. Oh, 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 oh. You are alive in us. Nothing can take your place. You are all we need. Your Come on, he's alive, amen, church. We give you praise, Lord. Sing it out, you are. You are, you are, you are my freedom. We lift you higher. Come on, sing it out. You are, you are, you are my freedom. We lift you higher, lift you higher. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate Jesus being alive inside of us. Woo! Aren't you so glad you came to church this morning with a group of people that are alive in Christ? Why don't you give five people a high five and just say, He's alive? Just let's celebrate that together this morning. He's alive. He's alive. He is alive. Pastor Marvin, Esther, myself, and a team got back from Columbia in the wee hours of Monday morning. We had an amazing time away. It was absolutely life-changing. And I'll share a little bit, show you some pictures next Sunday. It ties in so much better with the theme of our message next week. And our boys and girls will be in the auditorium, and we want them to be part of that experience. So thank you for the honor and the privilege of being able to go to 
Columbia. It changed my life. And looking forward to sharing some thoughts next week. How many people are ready for God's Word? Come on, how many people are ready for God's Word? Well, let's get out our sermon notes. They are on the back of your bulletin. And we are in a 10-part sermon series as we've been exploring and taking a fresh look at the, the Ten Commandments. And the neat thing about this is the boys and girls in WOW Church are tracking through the same theme and teaching down to their level, and uh, God's just been doing some amazing things. This morning, I have the honor and the privilege of camping on the second last commandment, Exodus chapter 20, verse 16, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. So I want to invite you to take some notes. You've got it on the back of your bulletin, or you can pull it up on your handheld device. And I thought that I would begin by sharing with you some of the most famous lies that people tell in North America. You ready for this? Number one, the check is in the mail. I hope you've never used that one, but that's one of the most common lies in North America. I'll start my diet tomorrow. You like that one? You know, people say it. They have absolutely no intention of starting their diet tomorrow, but I'll start my diet tomorrow. Tomorrow. Um, money cheerfully refunded. You ever had that one? Not, not cheerfully refunded, but yeah. Here's one that, that I can relate to. One size fits all. I want to put in brackets, except for me. I don't know about you. It never fits me right when it says one size fits all. Here's a good one. Open wide. This won't hurt you one bit. Yeah. My apologies to any dentist in the room today. Let's have lunch sometime. You ever use that one? Yeah, let's have lunch sometime. Um, it's not the money. It's the principle. No, it's not the principle. It's the money, and you know it. All right. I, I want to read to you something else that I, I came across. This was good. The story is actually told of four high school boys who couldn't resist the temptation of skipping school in the morning. I mean, they were smitten by the spring fever, and after lunch, they showed up at school. They reported to the teacher, and this is, this is what they said to the teacher. I'm so sorry. Our car had a flat tire. I'm really sorry. Much to their relief, she smiled and said, well, boys, you missed a quiz this morning. Take your seats. Pull out a pencil and paper, still smiling. She waited until they settled into their chairs, got out their pen or the pencil and their paper. And she said, question number one, which tire was flat? I like that one. Whoa. A store manager hears his clerk tell a customer, no, no, ma'am, we haven't had any for a while, and it doesn't look as if we're going to be getting any soon. Horrified, the manager came running over to the customer and said, well, 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 of course we'll have some soon. We placed an order last week. And the manager drew the clerk aside afterwards and said, never, he snarled, never, never say we're out of anything. Say we've got it on order, and it's coming soon. Now, what was it that she wanted? The clerk looked at the boss and said she was asking about rain. All right, all right, all right. I, I want to summarize this message in one sentence. And I want you to write this in your notes. Here it is. Since telling the truth matters to God, and it does, it ought to matter to each and every one of us this morning. If it's important to God, it needs to be important to us. So allow me this morning as we begin this message to walk you through some introductory scriptures. And the first one is found in the book of Psalm chapter 12, verse 1 down to verse 3. And, and David is commenting on what was going down in his generation. Listen to what the psalmist said. He said, help, Lord. No one is faithful anymore. Those who are loyal have vanished from the human race. Look at verse 2 and 3. Everyone lies to their neighbor. They flatter with their lips, but they have harbor deceit in their hearts. May the Lord silence all flattering lip and every boastful tongue. And then there's Solomon, the wise Solomon. Notice what he said in Proverbs chapter 6. There are six things that the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him. Verse 17, a lying tongue. And verse 19, a false witness who pours out lies. We come into the New Testament and Paul was writing to a church in Ephesus. And in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25, he says, Each one of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, 
for we're all members of one body. Paul is calling the church in Ephesus to put off falsehood and speak truth one to another. And then there's Colossians chapter 3, verse 9. Paul said to the church in Colossae, Do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices. You see, God was speaking to Paul to invite the people to live a life that is different. Church, I know in our society, it sometimes feels like everybody is lying. But we are not to be like everybody. We are to be like people of truth not people of the lie. The the enemy, Satan, is the father of all lies. But we are followers of the truth. And then when when society looks at us, may they see a people that speak the truth completely and at all times because God calls us to speak the truth. In Revelation, oh, these are haunting verses, but allow me to read it from Revelation 21. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexual immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and then he says, and all liars. They will be consigned to the firing lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. You know, friends, we can lie to one another, we can lie to God, and we can lie to ourselves. But this morning, I want to challenge us to switch from lying to speaking truth at all times. So I want to explore this theme this morning with you, and I want to very quickly give you, number one, a number of things that this command forbids. Now, I'm going to list to you just eight of them, and let me be honest, you could probably come up with another 20 or 30 that you see in the Scripture. But number, number one, I, I want you to write this in your notes, lying under oath. The heart of this commandment was people of that day were actually lying under oath. They were supposed to be standing before their leaders. They were taking an oath to speak the truth, but they were lying. And some people were speaking maliciously about someone else and saying, hey, this is what this person did, although they knew it wasn't true. And so when you you pick up a scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 19, it's an interesting scripture Deuteronomy 19, verse 16, down to verse 20, tells us what goes down if you're under oath and you lie and you say something about someone that's not true. Listen to this. If a malicious witness takes the stand to accuse someone of a crime, the two people involved in the dispute must stand in the presence of the Lord before the priest and the judges who were in the office at that time. And the judges must make a thorough investigation. And if the witness proves to be a liar giving false testimony against a fellow Israelite, then due to the false witness, as that witness intended to do to the other party, you must purge the evil from among you. The rest of the people will hear of this, and they're going to be afraid, and never again will such an evil thing be done among you. Bottom line, you give false witness, and you say something malicious about someone that's wrong, may you get the same punishment that they were supposed to get, lying under oath. Then there's number two, the direct lie. Number two, the direct lie. I mean, that's what Jacob did when he wanted to deceive his father Isaac by pretending to be his brother Esau. He lied. And and it's sometimes people just lie directly when, when, well, did you do it? No. No, 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 I didn't. No, I didn't. And they lie directly, and it's blatant, maybe to protect themselves from consequences, maybe to protect their reputation, maybe maybe you directly lie on your income tax, ouch, or maybe you directly lie to your spouse, you directly lie to your parent, you directly lie to your boss, or you directly lie to someone who's working for you. And truth be told, it can be so easy to get caught in lying and speaking non-truths, the direct lie. But then there's number three, it's the subjective lie. I mean, the subjective lie is when you arrange the facts in such a way that while not directly lying, you're allowing others to believe something that's not true. I mean, that's what Joseph's brothers did when when they brought that that, uh, cloth, that clothing, that coat that he wore. They dipped it in in blood from, from an animal. And they wanted their dad to believe that his son was dead. They let him come to his own conclusion. 
it would be like the guys in the office saying, hey, Mark, what you bring for lunch today? Well, I, I packed some leftovers. Let's go out. No, I can't. No, let's go out. No, i got to watch what I mean. Let's go out. We're just going to go to Frank's. We're just going to get a big sandwich. And then you get there, and you're eating a big sandwich. And then, you, then you're having a big tart. And then you're having a large pop. And, but you get some salad, you know, just to justify it. And it's a late lunch, and you go home, and Evelyn's got supper on, and she's made something you love. And you're sitting at the table, and you're trying to eat, and you can't eat lots because you ate too much lunch. And she says... Did you go out for lunch today? Yes. What did you have? A salad. <laughs> right? A salad. Or, or, or you go out and you're supposed to be watching what you eat. And you buy some french fries. And your wife says, what did you eat? And you say, I had a veggie tray. <laughs> Don't ever use that one, folks. I remember years ago, someone in a church, someone in the church made them a pie, and it was horrible. And they brought it home, and they threw it out. It was unedible. And the next week, sure enough, the person said to them, hey, did you enjoy the pie that we made for you last Sunday? And they said, I quote, you need to know a pie like that never lasts long in our house. Y'all better not use that one either. The subjective lie. Then there's number four. This was going down in that society of that day. Keeping quiet when you know the truth. I mean, in that day, some people wouldn't testify because they didn't want to get involved and they didn't want to be dragged into it, so they kept silent. They saw the crime, they saw something happening, but they kept quiet. And Leviticus chapter 5, verse 1 said, if anyone sins because they don't speak up when they hear a public charge to testify regarding something they've seen or they've learned about, they'll be held responsible. Number five is an outsure. It's slander. I mean, slander, let's be honest, is making false accusations against another person. I mean, you've got the intent of, of, of maligning their life, and it's, it's in the realm of gossip, it's in the realm of rumor, it's in the realm of innuendo. I mean, that's what Potiphar's wife did to Joseph, and, and it said something, to slander his character. And church, sometimes in the realm of slander, it might even be true that we've heard, but just because it's true doesn't mean the information needs to be passed on. Slander is trying to destroy someone's character. Slander, slander, slander is, has no place in the kingdom of God. Slander has no place amongst a body of believers. Slander has no place amongst people who are followers of the truth. May we speak words that only lift up and encourage and that are positive and uplifting and edifying to the body of Christ. Sometimes it's easy to code it. In spiritual words, I'm only telling you this so that you can pray. Yeah, sometimes we mean that, but sometimes we're only telling them because we can't wait to share the gossip. We can't wait to share what's not true. Slander. The Bible says in Romans chapter 1, verse 29, and the verses to follow, listen to this. They become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, depravity, they're full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They have no understanding, no fidelity, no love, no mercy. Though they know God's righteous decrees that those who do such things deserve death. They do not only continue to do these very things, but also approve of those who practice them. And then there's number six, flattery. I mean, I mean let's think about it, flattery. Flattery is, 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 is speaking things that you know aren't true, but you say them anyways to flatter someone. It would be like me today looking down to Pastor Brad, and I don't mean this, Pastor Brad, but we're going to pick on you as the sermon illustration. And I look at him and go... Oh, Pastor Brad, what you are wearing today is awesome. You look absolutely great. But on the inside, I'm thinking, this is horrible. <laughs> Who would ever wear that? 
I mean, you look great, but on the inside, we, we don't mean it. We flatter someone. We say stuff that we don't mean. Flattery. And then, then there's the next one. Well, let's read Proverbs 26, 28. A lying tongue hates those it hurts, and a flattering mouth works ruins. Careless exaggeration. Man, it's so easy to do that. It's amazing how the fish that we caught at the Ottawa Valley Pentecostal camp keeps getting bigger and bigger as each week goes by. It's amazing how we can quote numbers or stats or attendance or we can quote features of our car or things that we could exaggerate it carelessly and we know deep down that's not honoring to God. And then there's number eight, lying to God, making a promise to God that we have no intention of keeping. Church, we can lie to one another, we can lie to God, and we can lie to ourselves. But the message this morning is an invitation to be a person and a people of truth. I want to transition to number two, and I want you to think through these thoughts. I want to, I want to very briefly and very quickly give you three things that this commandment demands of us. Three things that this commandment speaks to us about, that it calls us to. Number one, number one, truthfulness in our words. Truthfulness in our words. I mean, you can be truthful 99% of the time, but then the 1% can affect the 99%. We lie once and everything else about us comes into question. We must be people that speak the truth at all times. And so the command here is an invitation for truthfulness in our words. Then there's number two, honesty. Honesty in our relationships. Sometimes that's hard. Sometimes someone tries to hold us accountable for speaking to our life, but it's like an arrow into our soul. And someone said, if you're going to shoot an arrow, make sure you put some honey on the end of it because you want to speak it with love. It was about 12 years ago, and we were getting closer to building this new auditorium. And I was a a larger person than I am today. I was 50 pounds heavier. Evelyn and I got married in 1986. I weighed less than 140 pounds. Yes, I did. Now, here's the problem. It's all her fault. She's such a good cook. Honey, amazing cook. And she put clothes in the wash, and I'm convinced she would shrink my clothes. I'm just saying today. And I just kept getting larger and larger and bigger and bigger. And one day... We're at a board meeting, and I think we were eating supper, and I'm just eating away, and one of our board members who's now gone home to be with the Lord, I won't give you his name, all right? I'll just give you his initials, all right? Just to be fair to him. His initials are Homer James. Oh, sorry. Homer looked at me. He said, Pastor, we love you. We want you around for a long time. What are you doing to take care of your health? Just then, there's probably some some mayonnaise from the sandwich going down the side of my mouth. And I said, well, I used to run lots. I, I used to go to the gym every day. I used to. And he said to me, Pastor, I'm not asking you what you used to do. I'm asking you what you currently do. We want you to be healthy and well. Christmas rolled around. And Evelyn realized I needed to take care of myself, so she, she put some honey on the end of the arrow. And she put a gift card in my stocking for a three-month membership to the gym. And I went, and I haven't stopped going. And I'm glad that Homer, yeah, and my wife prodded me to take care of myself. Evelyn and I were dating and I'm in Goddard, a pastor, single pastor on my own, and wanting to get engaged to this girl and, you know, hoping she'd say yes. And I saved up money, and I drove all the way to Toronto, three hours away, to take her out for a meal. And I was so proud of myself. I drove up, I picked her up at work, said, hey, taking you out for a meal. Where would you like to go? 
And my sweet wife looked at me. She's my girlfriend. And she goes, oh, I don't know. You decide. So I decided. I gave the name of a restaurant that I wanted to go to. Any of you guys ever done that before? And she looked at me and she said, no, I don't think I want to go there. I mean, she said to me, you decide. I decided. And then she said she didn't like my decision. So I thought she wanted the boxing gloves on. Let's go at it. Can anybody relate to that? I mean, I'm looking at life through my blue lens. She's looking at life through her pink lens. And really what she was saying, if you really loved me, you would know what restaurant I want to go to. Come on, ladies. You have a witness in the house right now? You relate to it? Come on, ladies. You get it? You get it? You get it? And we've had to really work hard at understanding how different we are. And even to this day, and you know this is true, honey, sometimes when you get honest with me, it's hard and it's difficult. But when you really love someone, you want honesty to be in your relationships. That's number two. Honesty in your relationships. And then there's number three, integrity in our lifestyle. Now I'm going to give you a stat that might shock you, but, but I've got to throw it out there. They say 41% of people exaggerate on their resume. They make it say more than it really is. Wow. I think God wants us to be honest and true. In other words, who you see on Sunday morning on this platform is no different than who you see on Monday morning, Monday night, Wednesday night, that what you see is what you get. I've shared this story before, but let me prefix it. I can't believe how much time has gone by. Our kids are all growing up. I mean, our baby. It's no long. She was five years old when we came here. In fact, yesterday she was signing a, a card for... Our, grand, our youngest granddaughter that turned one, and Jessica wrote her name, and I was teasing her. I said, when did you stop putting the heart above the eye? And she said, Dad, that was grade five. That was grade five. I'm 22 now. And she's on her way now to Bible college for her last year. But I can remember many years ago, as she spoke honestly to me, as we're sitting on our deck, and she's trying to get my attention, Daddy! Daddy, Daddy, Daddy! And I'm not even paying attention. I'm reading a book. I'm studying. I don't know what I was doing. And finally she said, Pastor Mark! And I looked at her and I said, Yes, may I help you? Ouch. Honesty in relationships. Truthfulness in our words. Integrity in our lifestyle. You see, Woodville, I don't want us to be one thing on Sunday and something else on Monday. Some of you, you're going to be tested in this where your boss is going to ask you to do something that goes against the character of God's teaching. You might even be called upon to lie on something, to stretch something, to do something, and you might even be challenged with someone might say to you, if you don't do it, you're going to lose your job. i got a word for you today. I'll tell you who you really work for, and I'll tell you who really will take care of you, and it's Jesus Christ. You guard your character, and God will take care of your reputation. Don't let anyone manipulate you to speak things that aren't truth. Live by the truth. Walk in the truth. Be truthful in your words. Be honest in your relationships. And be integral in your lifestyle that when people see you, they would say, you're the real deal. Now, I know we're in a society where it's so easy to lie. But church, we're not called to be people of the lie. We're called to be people of the truth. When the society looks at us, may they see a difference in us because we come on Woodville come on Woodville we're living and we're walking and we're exemplifying truth so I challenge you with truthfulness in our words honesty in our relationships and integrity in our lifestyles I want to wrap up this message and I want to give you some three three ouchers three practical steps that that I'm working on to help me become a more truthful person so that I don't fall into slander, gossip, 
flattery, exaggeration, direct lie, indirect lie, that I'm just a person of truth. And number one, get ready for this. You're going to be very quiet when I say this, but here it goes. Number one, practice creative silence. Silence. Speak less, and you will speak more truthfully. The more you speak, the more danger there is of being less truthful. The more you say, the more likely you are to exaggerate, to slander, to mislead, to stretch the truth. I mean, I've had to learn this, and I'm still learning this, that when Evelyn and I are communicating, sometimes when she's talking to me, I'm already preparing in my mind what I'm going to say next. And sometimes my family will look at me, not just my wife, but my daughters, and say, Dad, what did I just say? And I want to say, well, if you don't know what you just said, I'm not going to tell you what you just said. What's wrong with you? But they're, they're trying to help me realize I need to listen. And so creative silence means listen more, say less, and pray instead of interrupting. Pray for wisdom. Pray for guidance. Pray for understanding. Pray to understand more than being understood. Creative silence. Then there's number two. Oh, before I read number two, let me read these scriptures. They're bell ringer scriptures. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 19. Sin is not ended by multiplying words, but the prudent hold their tongues. Proverbs 11, verse 12, whoever derides their neighbor has no sense, but the one who is understanding holds their tongue. Proverbs 21, 23, those who guard their mouths and their tongues keep themselves from calamity. And Proverbs 13, 3, those who guard their lips preserve their lives, but those who speak rashly will come to ruins. Number two, Practice personal accountability. I don't know who said this, but they're, they're right. You are only as sick as your secrets. And personal accountability means you've got people in your life that will help you become accountable. Because we can lie to one another. We can lie to God. But we can lie to ourselves. And say, I'm fine, all's good, but there's stuff on the inside. I want to read to you a verse that I have preached from so many times, but I'm going to give you another thought about it. Here it is, John 8, 32. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And how many people believe that's, that's a true word? The truth, come on, how many people believe the truth will set you free? Do you believe that today, friends? That's about 50 of you. How about the rest? How many people believe the truth can set you free? Yeah, it can. Now, we call the truth Jesus, but here it is. Sometimes when the truth is confronted to you before it sets you free, it's going to really hurt. And you're going to go, man, I didn't, I didn't realize that's there. I didn't realize I'm like that. I didn't realize that's in my life. And when you've got someone who loves you and cares for you and helps you be accountable, the truth will hurt, but the truth can set you free. And that takes us to, to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who's the head that is Christ. So I'll take you to number three. And I want you to write this in your notes. We're going to scrape a little deeper in our final moments. And I want to challenge you with this. Commit today to becoming a person of truth. Now, even as I say that, some of you are going, not for me. I'm going to ask a question. Don't lift up your hand. Anybody here this morning never lied once in your life? Lift up your hand and you're lying already. Yeah. Slander, exaggeration, flattery. 
direct lie, subjective lie, lying to yourself. How you doing? I'm fine. Really? No, I'm fine. I'm good. We can lie to ourselves. How, how's your marriage going? How are things going in your family? How are things going in your life? Here's what I want to challenge all of you today to do. Let the Holy Spirit get deep into your heart and show you areas that need to be honed more so that you can be a person of truth. Hello, my name is Mark. And I want to be a person of truth. And I want Holy Spirit to show me areas that maybe have borderline in the realm of exaggeration or maybe borderline in the realm of a subjective lie or maybe maybe borderline in, 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 in other areas of flattery. God, help me so that I am a person of truth. John 14, 6, Jesus answered, said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Stay with me. Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. Here it is. This, we're going to get to the core of it now. Matthew 12, 34 says, For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. So whatever my heart is filled with, sooner or later will come out of my mouth. Some of you today... The reason why it's become easy for you to lie is because you're, you're marked with an insecurity on the inside. You're trying to find your identity. You're trying to discover your approval in the eyes of a human being. You just want to be accepted. You just want someone to say that I love you for just who you are. And your inside of you is marked by insecurity. Church. I want to challenge you today to not find your security in the approval of a person, but find your identity for who you are already in Christ Jesus. I want to declare in this place today that Jesus loves you so much. He loves you so much. And, and here it is. I think what we need today is a cleanup of our heart that the Holy Spirit would remove the insecurity and that Jesus, the truth, would fill us with himself the truth. That we would see who we are in Jesus Christ. Church, I stand on this platform today and say, my name is Mark, and I am a child of God Almighty. And he loves me unconditionally. He loves me unconditionally. Some of you, it's fear on the inside. Some of you, it's hurt, unforgiveness, jealousy, Rage, anger, Holy Spirit wants to come in and give you and I a new heart so that we would become a more truthful person. And so I want to challenge you with these words today. And I want to invite you today to let Holy Spirit dig deep into your life and help you to grow in this so that we would be a people of truth, not a people of the lie, that what you see is an example of Jesus Christ. Would you bow your heads with me this morning? God Almighty, I want to thank you for this amazing church. I want to thank you, God, for the journey that we are on as we're exploring these commandments. I want to thank you, Lord, for the challenge today to speak truth at all times. I pray, God, for every single person in this auditorium and for everyone that is watching this service on live streaming that we would be challenged and prodded and encouraged with the Scripture today. I'm asking that your Holy Spirit would dig deep into our heart and you would give us a new heart. A heart that is marked with truth. A heart that is marked with purity. 
so that out of our heart would flow truth. So I ask you for that, Lord. I pray for it in Jesus' name. Every head is bowed. Everyone's eyes are closed. In just a few moments, we're going to sing a song of worship. But before we do, I want to ask you a question. And this question is for everybody in this auditorium. Whether this is your first time here or you've come here for years. Whether you're a teenager or whether you're in your 90s or you're somewhere between. Whether you're sitting on the main level in the balcony in the risers or you're watching live streaming. Here's the question. Here it is. If today was the day that you stepped into eternity, do you know that 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 you're going to heaven? Do you know that? There's some of you today that even as I ask that question, you can't answer it with a loud, defined yes. You're not sure. You're not sure. You're checking out this Christianity thing. I want to declare to you, Christianity is not as much of a religion as it is a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. God sent His Son, Jesus. Jesus loved you so much. Jesus died for your sins. And salvation is you asking Jesus to come into your life, asking Him to forgive you of your sins, asking Him to be the center of your life. Church, the way to heaven is through Jesus Christ front to back, side to side, there's about 10 people in our first morning service that lifted their hand, letting me know that they wanted to be led in a prayer to accept Jesus into their life. And I just sense in my heart, there's a number of you in the second morning service, you, you, you want to be ready for heaven, and you can't answer that question with a definite yes, but you want to be ready, and today you want to be led in a prayer for Jesus to become the center of your life just a moment, I'm going to count to three. And after I count to three, if you want to be included and led in this prayer, I want you boldly to lift your hand high so I can see it. And by lifting your hand, you're letting me know, Pastor, I, I, I want Christ to come into my life. I want to be included in this prayer. So here it is. One, two, three. If that's you, you just lift your hand high. Hi. Yeah, way in the back. Bless you. Right in the front. God bless you, friend. Over here, several hands. God bless you. Anyone else? Up in the balcony. Yeah, way in the back of the balcony. Bless you, friend. I see your hand. Anyone else? Anyone else? I don't want to miss you. Yeah, right over there. God bless you to my right. Several hands. Anyone else? Quickly, five more seconds. Anyone else? Yeah, right back there, friend. Several hands. Bless you. Two more seconds. Anyone else? Anyone else? Would you stand with me this morning? There's probably ten more hands that were lifted. We're going to pause. And I want to lead you wonderful people in a prayer of receiving Jesus Christ into your life. And if you lift your hand, I want you to join me as I pray. And something we do often at Woodbells, we're going to join you as you pray. So let's pray together this morning. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus I ask you into my life. I ask you into my life. Please forgive me of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins. Today. I have, decided I have decided to follow Jesus. To follow Jesus. I made my peace with you. I made my peace with you. I want to live for you. I want to live. For you. I want to serve you. I want to serve you. Come into my life. Come into my life. Be the center of my life. Be the center of my life. I pray this now. I pray this now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, Woodville. Put your hands together and celebrate. Come on, celebrate salvation. I want you to think about this for a moment. Approximately 20 people this morning lifted their hand and asked Jesus to be the center of their life. I think we need to celebrate one more time. Come on, that's, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. 
And if you accepted Jesus Christ into your life, I want you to know you made the most important decision, the best decision you could ever make. And if you don't attend a life-giving, Bible-believing church, how many at Woodville would be pumped and excited if they joined us in the journey at Woodville? We'd be honored, wouldn't we, folks? We'd be honored. We really would. And if you accepted Jesus Christ into your life in a few moments when this service comes to a close, I want to invite you to go in the main lobby and the main floor, and you're going to see a wall with the word follow on it. There's going to be some friendly people there, and they're going to give you some stuff that can help you in your new faith journey. And we're just excited for you. If this is your church, get into a connect group. We have connect groups all across the city. It's a cluster of people meeting to pray together, fellowship together, study God's word together. You may want to attend one, lead one, host one, drop by the, the connect wall. If this is your church, we believe the happiest people are people who are serving through their local church. And if you have not found a place of serving in this church, we're going to help you go to the serve wall. Could we one more time just welcome all of our guests? Just let, let them know how glad, glad we are that they're here. Last, last Sunday, although some of your pastors were away, we, we heard that there were 29 first-time guests that came by the guest lounge. And we think that's exciting. We want you to know that we're so pumped that you chose to be here. Drop by the guest lounge. We want to bless you. We want to we let you know that we're so glad that you're here. Well, I'm going to ask one more question. Then we're going to sing. We're going to open this altar. How many people believe nothing is impossible with God? Do you believe that, church? Come on. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Do you believe it? There are some of you that are standing here today. You need a miracle from the Lord. And I'm going to ask if our pastoral team, our church board, our altar workers would immediately come. And here's what we're going to do. Pastor Brad is going to lead us in a song of worship. And if you need a miracle today, I want you to come forward. We believe that Jesus can heal the sick. Amen? I said, we believe Jesus can heal the sick. Amen? We believe that cancer is not too difficult for the Lord. Amen? You need a miracle. Come forward. A miracle of healing, a miracle of freedom, a miracle of restoration. Whatever the miracle is, we believe that Jesus is in the house today and he can do the supernatural so don't wait come on forward pastor brad's going to lead us you need a miracle come on forward and we'd love just to agree with you in prayer you come as we sing this is my desire to honor you lord with all sing it just one more time before we close but I want to invite you to lift your hands high to the heavens and just begin to worship the one who is truth, Jesus who is truth come on church, lift your voice, lift your hands let's focus on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords before we go lift your hands, lift your voice, let's sing it again this is my desire 
45 seconds this service is going to be dismissed for those who need to go but the band is going to keep playing and you're welcome to stay as long as you want this altar is going to remain open and I, I, I'd encourage you don't feel you have to rush out if you want to pause and just let the Holy Spirit do a work in your heart I just want to also say to you that after the service closes, that if there's any time that you wanted an extended time of ministry and prayer, you will see in the bulletin that on Thursday night, there's a drop-in with a team of people that are trained to help pray for you, and they'd be glad to spend a lengthy season of time praying with you through what you are walking through. So it's not just Sunday morning, it's Thursday night. So God, I want to thank you for this great church. I want to thank you for those that have come to the front. You know the miracle that they need. And I pray that they would receive their miracle this morning in the name of Jesus. God, I want to thank you for the time of worship. I want to thank you, God, for your scripture, your word. And I pray, God, that we would be challenged and exhorted to be truthful in our words, honest in our relationships, and people of integrity in our life. I pray, God, that that would transcend to our walk with you, our relationships, and in our own life, that we'd be truthful to ourselves. So Holy Spirit, do a great work, and may we grow in this area. Give us, God, an amazing week. We pray, God, as we gather next Sunday for that intergenerational Unite service that God you would show up in a great way. Go with these incredible people. To God be the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give a clap offering of praise to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Just keep leading us, Pastor. If you need to go, God bless you. This altar remains open.